So we're back from Niagara the Lake. We've, we've gone here to the St. Catharines Museum. Uh, St. Catharines uh, is, a, is, a, is a transport hub. Uh, it's on the Welland Canal. And the same way that that, that portage was taking place at the Furs over from Lake Erie onto Lake Ontario, off the St. Lawrence River to onto, onto Europe. This is a transportation hub in the same way. And we're here at the museum particularly though because they have this. And this is a beaver hat. This is a, it's a reproduction. It was made in six or seven years ago, I think. Uh, but it's a real beaver hat. Uh, and it's a reproduction of the style of beaver hat that was very fashionable in the 19th century. And we're looking at more, actually we're looking at more earlier, significantly earlier than the 19th century generally. But, but certainly this is the kind of hat that in many ways was driving the fur trade. And Julie, have you ever seen one of these before? Well, you have seen them on TV and in movies, but I've never seen one in real life. And I didn't even realize that they were made of beaver. I think the ones that we see are sometimes silk, but it's kind, yes, of, yes. It's kind of like a soft little fur, yeah. fur to it. And it's actually quite absurd. Uh, women wouldn't typically wear these. No, it's definitely a man's hat. Um, what I think of when I see them is Lewis Carroll. I always think of uh, uh, Alice, in, Alice in Wonderland and then, what's the guy's name? The Mad Hatter. Hatter. Yeah, yes. exactly, exactly. That's because the, the, this is a felting process right, that exactly. they would use. They used, they used uh, mercury. Mercury, and, which and made, made them insane. Completely <laughs> <And> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a marvelous thing, um, but it's also something that's strange to us, I think. It's strange to us as something, well, you might wear it at a costume ball or a Halloween thing or something like that, but you probably wouldn't, wouldn't think of it as something to wear to the office. I, I can't even imagine that uh, tens of thousands, millions. millions of beaver pelts were basically um, imported for, for this purpose. Yeah. This yeah. is what the fur trade was the, the, the most lucrative it's remarkable. Uh, it is. It really is. So we think about all the great staples. You know, fish. You eat fish. Cotton. You wear cotton. Uh, sugar. You eat sugar. Furs. You make funny hats. It's a, it's a remarkable, it's a remarkable angle on the history of our country. Uh, we made funny hats from them. And but so it we find. Up, oh, but it opened up the interior of the continent. Really, by 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 linking into those river systems, those trade networks, those indigenous trade networks. That's what that was all about. Right, and uh, a lot of the Aboriginals also thought it was a slightly absurd. Oh, they must. I, I, I don't know if I've ever myself seen a, a comment like that, uh, maybe in the Jesuit relations on that sort of thing. I've, I haven't seen anything, but they certainly didn't wear anything like that. And they certainly, I mean, in our readings, we see comments where the Indigenous people are, are puzzled by what they're doing with these furs. I don't know if they saw that as the final end product, but they certainly knew this was an unusual thing to be doing, to be killing so many animals just for the fur, and to be taking all that lovely thick stuff off to get at that under hair. From That's right, it was actually more valuable yeah. after they had worn it. So when we're looking at the readings and we're, and we're trying to look at opinions, mm. it's really important for us to be, to be focusing in on the evidence. Yeah. Um, so they reference primary sources, we're reading secondary sources, mm -hmm. and they're referencing primary sources, and it's really important for us to find opinions and how they differ. Or, yeah. and, well, in the same, it's, we, we, we talk about in the historian's toolbox, we talk about perspective, and we have a perspective on that hat, and they had a perspective on that hat. The traders had a particular perspective on the hat, the indigenous people had a particular perspective on the hat, and it's those, that confluence of different perspectives that creates the kind of interesting cultural mix that we see in these readings. Um, so in the same way that we're kind of responding to it with a bit of a snicker, um, they weren't snickering, but they were responding to it differently, and we can look for that. We can look for the evidence that the historians give us of how to think about that. And also situated in the time, so the historical yeah. perspective of how, the opinion of the time, yes, of yes. the people in France and Britain who really, this was the height of fashion. Absolutely. They wanted to look dapper, so they, it was really important to bring these things over. This is a rich man's hat. Um, this would be, I don't know exactly what it would have sold for in the 19th century, but probably in the range of five to 10 pounds. Uh, which for a poor laboring worker would have been a winter's wages. Wow. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real mark of status, it's a real mark of somebody who's made it in the world. 